Thank you very much, Rodrigo, and welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Nacho Symes. I'm part of the team of front end of Nextiva, and Fabian is with me. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, uh, Fabian Flores. I'm also part of Nextiva team. And we are going to talk about uh, TypeScript, but from a point of view uh, or telling you that if this can be a good decision to change from JavaScript to TypeScript to help you to have more security of the type of data that you will use and to predict the variables that are included in some objects or string uh, types that we can accept. So let's start with this presentation. So what we are going to see or our agenda is the definition of TypeScript, the difference uh, with uh, JavaScript. Why is this important? The type of interfaces, TypeScript type and interfaces, classes that currently, uh, because we are implemented in JavaScript. And last but not least, inference and narrowing and the difference of type and how can help you to reduce that inference for something more specific. So let's start uh, defining or describing TypeScript. As you can see, this slide is like a pukayoke of, if you don't know what that is, is a way to define that only certain things can happen uh, following a path. So you cannot have a, a heart in the, in the in this circle shape with typescript what we are going to define is i'm going to accept just some kind of a type in a code in with a specific scope and complemented with copayoke we have an aid to know what available information of the variable that I'm receiving. And this is an inference. And some developers or certain editors, as ES Code and other ones, help us to say this variable is a string type or is a specific object with certain property with all these values. As a developer, this help us uh, with experience. We we don't need to change from one place to another and to know the correct value. But this can be predicted by the Estalt. I don't know if some of you have already researched this area, but uh, what is very easy is uh, less uh, of uh, this uh, skill. And if we are using JavaScript, how can we use it? And in our daily day, and there are some tools such as Babel, we add some configuration and they are in charge of all the process to go back to the other language that are supported by our browsers. As you know, web is very big and all the browsers have the same level. Each one uh, is working with uh, different things. And that's why that not all the things are compatible. Babel has the control that to know all the versions of TypeScript and based in what we want to attack. For example, I want to use Chrome or I want to use just Firefox. So the models can be smaller because they are not supporting all the variety. So in order to use TypeScript, we are going to use preset. These presets are, uh, are several plugins and to have all this in just one package. And now this is the process that I'm just describing. How am I going to feel very proud because I don't have to review one file to the other. Everything is so beautiful as we are doing this app for the first time. But sometimes when we arrive to a company, there's a lot of this app uh, re, uh, done and or maybe redone for somebody some someone else so in that case what is very important is to know the intention of all this uh, history if we want to uh, pass that legacy to other developers something that we can do to help them is to have all this documentation or directly in the self descriptive code 
And in that way, what we are going to do is when we use TypeScript, we are using some data in the app and when we are going to change for some reason, but to put it very specific. So when we read it, we it will be very easy to acquire the knowledge. And this is very important because it's, it's a normal thing. The developers uh, need a lot of time reading the code and then implementing. So this is the circle that I need to remember the variables of all the developers, and but without changing the concept. And I will uh, pass the the floor to Fabian to explain us the type of TypeScript and how it's related with JavaScript. Gracias. Uh, thank you, Nacho. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, the, the types of TypeScript and uh, the ones that we already have available in JavaScript. In JavaScript, we have a lot of types, string, null, undefined, arrays, number, Etc. But TypeScript uh, add a couple that are pretty interesting. We have uh, one that is Minot types. In the top types, we have two new types that are in this uh, group. The, the first one is any, and the second one is unknown. Any is how we manage our data in JavaScript. Uh, Boolean, you can change it to a number or a string or an array. You can do it. And that's something that JavaScript allowed. In TypeScript, uh, this is what we mean. And if you have a project in JavaScript and you are thinking to pass it to TypeScript, a way to do it or to start uh, to your project to TypeScript is to have all these types in any and change it to the correct data. For example, a, a number and then to TypeScript, you can change it to number in the correct form. Uh, the unknown part is also interesting because uh, an interesting scenario to use this is when we request to the server and we wait for the answer, and in some way we are pretty sure of the answer, but sometimes that's not the case. Unknown help us precisely to tell TypeScript that maybe there will be a value and when the server answer, we know that it will be a number. And then we have the flexibility to validate. And Nacho is going to talk more a little bit about this. And we can validate that the value that we are expecting, it can be a type of, a number. And if the lift is valid, we are going to use that information. Otherwise, the TypeScript will forget and will not take into account. So with this, our app will not explode or, or we, to answer in another way. So this is a little bit of what is the unknown. The autumn bottom, bottom type that we have in TypeScript is never. Never is a kind of... A, Curious is uh, something that will never will happen. It's a function that will never bring back anything. So this will help you in some way to in your code. An example that is very practical is uh, if I'm offering a uh, chocolate to Nacho, but the box is empty. So he will receive nothing. So this is like never in this example. So these are the new types of TypeScript and they are pretty interesting. Now let's talk about of the Alice's type and interfaces. 
In the LSS type, we have uh, two groups, the unions and intersections. Unions are interesting because allow you to combine one or more types and assign it to uh, an object. Unions are represented by the logic operator and you are telling TypeScript, you know what? I want to assign more than one type for this variable. For example, if, if we have a cat or a dog, we know that cats uh, do some uh, uh, sounds and the dogs bark, and we are going to assign a value. And we can do it, and TypeScript will respond. This is allowed. If you are telling TypeScript, this is a cat or a dog, Type will say, yes. If you are going to send me a, a dog or a cat, I'll be ready. So that's a, a feature or a characteristic that allowed us to assign a lot of values to one variable without uh, breaking the app. Intersection are different are represented with a logic operator. And I would like to see it in this way, is to create super types or combined types. If we already have a cat or a dog, in a, some way with this operator, we can combine these two type. And we will have a super type, a cat dog, for example. And then we want to assign our cat or a dog. and and in that way, they will assign the correct sounds. It's more or less how these aliases, unions, and intersection work. And as you can see in the slide, are represented in the left part are the unions, and in the right part are intersections and aliases. And last, uh, there I will talk about interfaces. And I don't know if you have worked with a type of language as JavaScript. These languages have this feature because interface are like an agreement or a way to form your classes. And everything that you will have inside your interface is what your class objects also will have. For example, there is a method, I don't know, again, barking, when you declare that object or class and implement an interface of animal with those uh, features, your class objects need to have that uh, method. So for these are the interfaces to define the way of your objects. And normal are also divided in classes. And you can implement several classes and interfaces. One of the questions, maybe we will have this question at the end. So if you put interfaces and classes side by side are very alike, in what moment are you using one or the other? Interfaces. You can override it. If you have a declare interface with a method that can be, again, bark, barking, and then you rewrite with the same name in a different file with maybe, I don't know, another method, TypeScript will interpret that that is the same interface and combine it with two methods. And that's super cool. Because if you are creating a library or doing a framework, using interfaces is, with this, you allow developers to use your framework or library and extend your types, as well the functions of your library. If you don't want that, you can use type alias. 
Now I will continue with this topic. It's just to clarify what we are doing with the boardroom types. One thing is even though that we don't have a return in a function, it will come back uh, like a, a defined. When we say that we are not going to give back anything is because that function cannot uh, fulfill all the execution. This can be, maybe there's an error and we are outside of the stack. And so that's why we are not using the function. Or maybe we will have only two options and then we have a switch, we have a third option and that will never happen. And let's continue with the inferred and to narrow the normal types. When we talk about the infer is the normal condition of type. We are not going to write all these types. And if I want to have a default value for a variable and it's like a stream, directly we'll say, the developer is saying that this is the default value and then editing, and this variable will be string. And if it's a, an object, this object, and if I wanted to extend it, only in the cases where type script infer that we as developers is when we need to go there and define how we are going to structure our information. Because what is very important as a developer is how I can have the information and then send it to a place that is uh, more possible to analyze and to have a better relation with the customer. So that's why we can narrow the scope as the initial value. An example of this is uh, uh, Redux. With Redux, we have all the values of a store depending on the size of the app. So we can say with all the properties established since the beginning or maybe totally free. But we want to be very sure that the properties at the beginning are the ones that we are going to handle. And again, what is important is communication with the developers. So the project, it's very clear. And that object is going to be narrow with the values that we are having. In that case, I'm going to add ASCONS at the end of the statement. And with that, the value will be very minimum uh, until it's a type literal. Do you remember what Fabian mentioned? If I want a variable that has just one, zero and one, literally, I we will have zero type and one. And with that, all, only those values will be established in that variable. Different of GA stock that help us in this uh, infer in the values, TypeScript give or help us when we are developing if something is not accomplished. Somebody can say, this is not a help. It's complicated because everything is breaking if we are not having that deal. But I, what I want to tell you is do it, but locally because one is in production, the end user will realize if something is break or not. So if they have that part of the app that is not working, it will be very difficult to recover that trust with the customers or users. They will start uh, finding out another solution. That's why TypeScript help us in this precise moment to give us a lot of certainty that everything is working out as we are expecting. So, cons is uh, helping us to reach that very narrow space or to very wide space. So, it's in our decision if that is working and to establish the current or the real type of the information for all the developers and to have it very clear and not to complicate, complicated with different or unions. So developers will read it very easy. <laughs>